Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Marvin. What a blessing. All right. John 14. John 14 here this evening. <clears throat> you know, um, I've been enjoying this series that we've been going over, um, the names of God. And just, I love really, anytime I preach on Jesus and or his deity and looking at God and his person, it seems like the Holy Spirit always works more in my life for some reason. And I just, it, I enjoy it more. I certainly enjoy the Lord more during this, getting to know him better. Um, this is one of those as well. Um, tonight, we're going to look at um, a very popular scripture, John 14, 6. Many of you know this. It says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And in this scripture that's very popular, it's one of the um, seven I am's, um, but we're going to look at the truth, the truth tonight, how Jesus is the truth, and he certainly is the epitome of truth. And um, I was talking with a very good friend of mine I've known for many, many years, and um, he's very vocal on like um, Facebook, <clears throat> and he deals a lot of things with um, um, race and from a Christian conservative perspective, and um, he said after we were discussing some things with, with, this, um, with this kind of this as a back subject, and he said, listen to this, um, some of the things I said that I'll be preaching tonight, he said it completely changed his perspective on what he does, and as a good thing, because even what he did was a great thing, but, um, and so hopefully you'll see something a little bit different, um, and it kind of showed me something a little bit as well. So um, here in John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let's pray. Father, I do love you, and I thank you for this opportunity to be here tonight. Lord, I thank you that we can be in your presence, be amongst family and friends, and, and learn and grow. I pray for the children and their ministry that they'll really... Lord, grow and get close to you and build their own personal relationship with you and know you as in independently for themselves and not through adults or through church, but more, most of all, Lord, because they know and love you. Lord, I pray that we'll do the same, that each one of us here tonight can take the truth and, Lord, see you in it all and how real it is and how important it is in our lives. Father, please use me as your servant. Lord, we love you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> you know, I've preached on this subject matter many times over the years. And um, there's so many, there's many different ways to go in teaching on truth, um, certainly. But there's also looking at Jesus or God being truth and what that means and how that we should be look how differently we should look at it in comparison to the world I think is very important to notice and so um, Jesus said he is the way the truth and the life so Jesus is the truth we all understand that right I mean there's truth like I can tell the truth but I'm not the truth right I may hold on to the truth I may be able to you know expel truth but I'm not the truth where Jesus is the truth so it's like God is love you know you don't have love without God in the same thing with God you don't have truth without God Do you understand that point there's a difference there and so look at John um, 8 John chapter 8 and verse number 31 with me John 8 31 it says then say Jesus to those Jews which believed on him if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. How do you know the truth? If you continue in his word. So you have to continue in the word of the Lord in order to know the truth. And so in the truth is what sets us free. It's what makes us free. So in order for us to truly understand truth, you have to have God involved. And if you have God involved, you got to have the word of God involved because he speaks to us and gives us so much revelation through the word of God, of which that is truth. That's why one of the reasons Satan over the years has tried to confuse the word of God so much in this world because then people can question the truth and find their own truths 
and they lose the perspective of God's truth. Do you understand that part? See, we live in a world today where everybody's trying to come up with their own truth. There is nobody's own truth. The only one who has their own truth is God. Amen? You may see things differently. There may be different perspectives on a cer certain subject matter or truth, but there's only one truth. Do we get that? You may see, you may be a part, each one of us may be a part of that truth, or we may be able to see something different than somebody else on that truth, but it's still the truth. It's still God's, okay? I'm going to try and explain that a little bit more here in a little bit, but John chapter 8, verse number 44, look at verse 44. It says, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Wow, that was a pretty good explanation of Satan's truth, right? Because he has no truth. And Jesus makes it so clear here. He says, listen, he had the truth but he didn't abide in the truth because there's no truth in him, because you can only have truth in God. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. He makes up his own lies, and he's the father of it. He's just a liar. Amen? So understanding this point as we get a little bit further, I want to give you some examples. See, the devil has no truth in him, period. Deceit is at the core of his truth, of his own it, it, try and perceive truth. And he can speak truth, but it's not truth. Now, I really need you to understand this because this is where we're going to go a little. Let me just jump in. Look at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 with me in your Bible. And when you're looking at this, I want you to think about what's happening here. This is when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. <clears throat> he says in verse number 3 of Matthew 4, And when the tempter came to him, which is the devil, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So, in this case, the devil just says, Hey, make some bread. You're fasting. He's been fasting for 40 days. Go ahead and make some bread. And Jesus says, Listen, it's not about bread. You know, that's what he was telling him. It's not about this earth. You know, you're always trying to, you know, one of the biggest things Satan does is try and get people to get earthly minded. You know, to think of, think of the flesh. But listen to the truth that he speaks here in just the next one and find a difference in this. In verse 5, Then the devil taketh him up into a holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now let me ask you this. What he just said, is that true? It is. It's true. That's scripture. He just quoted scripture. It's truth, right? So, he's a, he, he said something true, but listen to how Jesus responded. Verse 7. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. See, Jesus took this and he didn't try and argue the truth because you, there's no need to argue the truth because it's truth. The statement he gave was truth. But the problem was, was the motive behind the statement. The deceit that went with the truth, which no longer makes it truth. And this is what we need to understand. Even when he says something true, he says it with an evil intent. He's trying to motive, he's trying to put a different motive into that. And different, um, how should I say, a deception, a motive behind the truth. He's trying to manipulate the mind of somebody. And of course he can't do that with Jesus. But he's done it to all of us, and we've done it to other people as well. I believe most people, not everybody, and not all the time, but I believe everybody at one time or another, but there's a lot of people in this world today that don't tell the truth almost never in the way the Bible describes truth with no evil intent behind it. See, the thing is, he says the truth to get an evil response. So when he comes at this, when he's coming at Jesus, 
He gives them this truth and says, the Bible says this. But he wasn't trying to stand alone on the truth and on the word of God. He was trying to get Jesus to do something that would be wrong. And you know, we live in a world today that tries to do that in many ways. And we oftentimes do the same thing. And I'll give some examples here in just a moment. But I want you to look at Psalm 91. We're going to come back to that thought. Look at Psalm 91 in verse number 1. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place, in verse number 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, if the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I, what? Trust. You guys following me? Look at verse number 2. Um, verse number 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou, what's that word again? Trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So twice he uses the term, the word trust. And then he says his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. See, <clears throat> trust is the key to accepting truth for you and me. You got to have truth. If there is truth, it stands alone. But me putting trust in that truth allows that truth to be mine as well. Or for me to learn or grow or, or to gain something because of that truth. Um, just because something is true, it doesn't mean I trust it or believe it, right? How many people have been fooled before but later found out it was true. Something was true, but then you thought it was false or wrong. But then you came to find out you were wrong. Yeah, that, yeah I guess I was wrong. That was true. Right? Anybody, everybody has done that. We've all done that. See, what happened was you had a truth. You had something that's true, that's real. But then you didn't believe it. You chose not to believe it for whatever reason. Because of an experience of yours. Because you thought you were smarter than somebody else. Whatever reason. It doesn't matter what it's for. But... You chose not to believe the truth. But the truth was there. It didn't matter whether you believed it or not. It's still the truth. Right? But you found out through whatever reasons, I was wrong. That is the truth. That was true. Right? What happens is truth is truth whether you decide to believe it or not. That's, that's where truth is. Just like God is true, he is real, he is God, he's the almighty, he's the only God, whether people believe it or not, it doesn't matter. He still stands alone as God, as the truth, right? It doesn't matter if you believe it. It doesn't matter if nobody believes it. He's still God. Do you guys understand that point? We all understand that point. But um, when you trust it as truth, it now becomes your truth. When you take something that is true and then you say, yes, I believe that and accept that, now I can say that's my truth. I believe that. Now... When we look at God and we see him for who he is, we have to be able to trust him. And for truth to do anything in our lives, it has to be assigned trust for it to be useful to people. God is there. He is who he is. He's the creator of the almighty. He's God. He's truth. But I can die and go to hell if I don't accept him as his truth. Right? Everybody does. So, even though it's there, it does no good for me if I don't trust in God. That's where it comes in. Now look at Psalm 96 with me. Let's go a little bit further. Psalm 96. In verse number 11. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof. Verse 12. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. Before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. With his truth. See, Jesus is coming back and will judge us with his truth. It's him, but he also has a truth to that. So each one of us in here, we're going to be judged by God by his truth. Not by our truth, not by my truth, not by the world's truth, not by anything else but his truth. 
We know also part of judgment is the word of God. He's going to open the books. The Bible says in the books were open and we were judged by those books. It's the truth that we are going to be judged by. Now, many people are speaking their truth. How many people have heard that term over the last number of years? Frustrating? That always frustrates me. Well, that's my truth. What's your truth? <laughs> my truth is the truth. <laughs> it just it frustrates me that people have to make up their own. No, truth is the truth. And that's all it is. Someone stating the truth to deceive people into accepting whether it's their po political agenda or their, to mold their minds or their, um, some way to benefit them or their organization or their beliefs is wrong. And we see that in a lot of aspects um, in our world today. We see that in our individual lives. I've watched this in people's lives. I mean, it's just like the statement of saying, oh, I went fishing, I caught a big fish. Everybody knows that joke, right? Well, you're exaggerating. No, you're not giving the truth. You may have went fishing, you may have caught a fish, and in your mind, it might even have been big. But in reality and truth, it wasn't, right? And so the idea here is, People can make up their own things, but I've seen where people will tell somebody the truth, but then withhold things because they don't want them to know the whole truth. And the reason they don't give them the whole truth is because they're trying to manipulate their mind for a reason. If I gave them the whole truth, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to tell them something, but I'm not just going to give them all of it because it might change the way I want them to, to understand, what I want them to think. Do you guys get that for a minute? And that's happening all over the place. It happens in politics, it happens in homes, businesses, the world in general. People are giving some truth out there, but they're doing it, they're only given a certain part of that to deceive them, to believe what they want them to believe. Because if they gave them the whole truth, or they said it in the right way that was said differently, but still the truth, they would see things differently then. They might have to choose that you were wrong, or yet you're standing on the wrong principles. You know, there's a thing that I've been doing a lot of study and reading about, and it's been in the news a lot, is critical race theory. And I was talking to a friend of mine about that today, and we were going over some things. And critical race theory basically is um, to teach children that, in a, I got to be careful not to say it in a way to try and mold people's opinions one way or the other, but um, it's trying to bring, in a nutshell, let me give, the, I'm going to give this opinion. I believe it's, it's telling people that um, they're, everyone's racist and that um, in the U.S. it's a racist country and that with, it's been racist and it's going to be racist with irredeemable roots. And that's what is a lot taught in CRT. And what they're saying is that Everybody is racist, and as a result, people are hurt and damaged by that. Our history has been racist, and you can't change that. And there's a lot, there's, it's so complex, you can't say it in a nutshell, but I can say some certain ways, I can say it the way I just said it, and it can bring a negative connotation to what CRT is. And so if you don't know anything about it, you can say, well, yeah, I don't agree with that, so therefore I'm against it. But if I was on the other side, I could say, no, it's teaching history during different perspectives that our country was built upon with racist ideals and the world is, is unequal and therefore because of these unequal things that have been in throughout our entire existence as our country, so therefore today in every organization, certain races like um, black people don't have a same advantages as other people like whites. And then you can say, well, yeah, I agree with that too. So where do you stand? So how you take something, I mean, truthfully, racism has been part of our country from the beginning, if you really want to go there. Slavery was a major spot in a major part of our world. There's no doubt about it, of our country. And at the same time, there's been racism in other areas as well, with Italians, with um, Asian, during the whole war and everything, with, with different camps. There's always been racism a part of our country. But is everybody a racist? I think if you really looked at it, no. So you have to look at this subject matter and say, okay, 
how is it taught? Who is putting together these books and these um, school books to teach this subject matter? I believe it's important to have history and have proper history taught. And there's some negative, terrible things that happen in our history that should not be forgotten, just like Jews with the Holocaust. You don't forget something like that. That's why we celebrate 9-11. We don't, we don't forget some terrible things that happened to us as our country. That's why we have certain holidays for certain reasons. Fourth of July, Independence Day. There's things about our history that we celebrate, but there's other things that we also have to acknowledge and keep real, right? But also, you can't take certain things to extremes to back up your political agenda because it, it profits you in your policies. See, and that's what's happening with a lot of different groups is they're taking a subject matter and they're manipulating the truth of events that have happened and saying this is why it happened and this is why we have to deal with this and it's making... I, want, I got to be able to say it properly. It's making people, it's molding people's minds to a direction where it's not true anymore. There's a basis of truth, but it's manipulating them to a falsity, to something that's not real. Do you guys get what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm clearly describing this. Anybody? I'll try and do it a little bit different here in a minute. But I want you to understand something that most people, when telling the truth, have some kind of an agenda. When you give, has anybody ever had to tell somebody something that you knew it was going to be hard, that they might not want to accept it, or you knew you might get in trouble for some reason or another? Anybody ever done that? Right. We all have done that. Okay. When you started talking, a smart person is trying to analyze the words to say and how to bring it across so it's not as bad. Or it's not perceived by the other person that you had bad intentions or something, correct? And so what you're doing, you're trying to take something, put it out there, but you're trying to make it so you don't look too bad, right? Many people do this. Now, I'm not saying it's completely wrong. I'm just saying that is a very, you're on the line of becoming deceptive. And how you judge things and how you judge people or events, you have to look at the big picture. I've learned as a counselor that if I'm counseling a couple, I have to, I can't just take one person for everything they say. I have to have different perspectives. Right? Because how a person feels, they may give me the truth, but it's their perspective. And they're giving it to me in a certain way to where I don't judge them too badly. Right? So you got to look at another picture. The same thing goes with every part of our life. Because all of us want to know the truth for ourselves, right? We should want to know the truth. But don't you want to know the whole truth without deception? Don't you? You should. And if you want to know the whole truth without deception, you got to come at the truth for what it is and don't allow yourself to be manipulated to another person's ideal. Part of preaching, and I've had to learn this over the years as a pastor, part of preaching, many people get fooled in religion because somebody will come up and preach something, the same scripture I'll read, I'll preach the word, and I'll tell you what I believe that is or the, or the application behind it, and then another preacher can come up, say the same exact truth, the same exact scriptures, but lead you into a di different direction. And a person in another church can come by, well, I believe that's what it said. One baptism. That means baptism is part of salvation. Right? They can read the same scripture, but get a whole different understanding because of how somebody walked them through that truth. And it led to a false. It led to something that was wrong. Do you guys understand that? See, Jesus himself said, if we're going to study scripture, it's supposed to be line upon line, precept upon precept, 
here, here a little and there a little. You don't just take one scripture and run with it. So you got to find the, the pattern. You got to find the truth inside the truth. The whole truth, nothing but the truth, right? How many courts nowadays even try to do that? What do lawyers do when they stand up there? They're doing the best they can to make their person that they're standing up there for to look good. Whether the complete garbage in the world, they can be the most worst person done the worst vile things and they're going to have a defense attorney standing up there to try and paint a pretty picture about that individual or something to make you feel sorry for them for why they did that. And they may even admit the truth. This person did this. They molested this person. They killed that person. But it really isn't their fault. Let me walk you through their life and how they grew up and what was done to them. And they're going to give them all these other things to manipulate the minds of somebody to not ignore the truth, but to see it differently now. Do we understand that? I want you to understand that that's not of God. God never intended that to happen like that. And I'll give you some, some balance here in just a moment. But um, look at um, Matthew chapter 22. Um, people do this, people do these kind of things out of pride because they want to appear smart maybe to hide the truth, the whole truth from somebody else. And I, I came up with a new term I think of myself called lawyering. Lawyering. I wrote it down as painting their own picture for you to see that doesn't end at the truth. And that's what I just explained. Just somebody luring. Just let me paint you a picture. Here's the truth. But let me kind of paint it up a little bit to lead you to a different understanding of what that truth is. That's not the truth anymore. See, Matthew 22, verse 15 says this. Then went the Pharisees and took the counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Now let me stop you there. Is that true? It is. Let me just give you the answer ahead of time. It is. All right? God does this. He, 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 he's true. He teaches the way of God in truth. He doesn't have, you know, he's not a respecter of persons is what they're saying. Verse 17. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Look at verse 18. But Jesus perceived their what? Their wickedness and said... Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? You know, they say in the truth, but he's looking at their intentions. He's looking at their heart. He's saying, yeah, you're saying the truth, but you're not giving me the truth. He's trying, they're trying to deceive him. They're trying to change his motives. They're trying to catch him, is what they were trying to do. They're trying to trick him into siding with them so that they can say, aha, I knew you weren't that, that real. But they used the truth to do that. You know, so many times this world is trying to do that in so many ways. I've watched it happen clearly in our society, on TV, on social media, and in all this other junk where they're painting Christianity in subtle ways as a bad, negative, worthless thing. Doing the same thing with God. The things of God, the truths of the Word of God. Well, God loves everybody. That's the big thing today. God loves everybody. Yeah, but he doesn't love... Well, I don't want to even be careful with that. But just because he loves everybody, he died for this world, doesn't mean you can be everything you want to be or do everything you want to do. You're still judged for sin. Do we understand that? But the world throws out things. Judge not. God says, judge not lest you be judged. Yeah, he did, but why don't you read the next verse? Right? See, the principle, people are wanting to do this, and it's Satan, there's a spirit world behind this stuff, trying to just manipulate and change the mind of people away from the truth. That's why when Jesus said, when he said very clearly, he perceived their wickedness. They just said the truth. But he perceived their wickedness behind that truth. Proverbs 3, verse number 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. 
So shalt thou found favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. You know, the Lord God is pure with truth, with no agenda. He's not trying to trick people to believe him. He's not trying to trick people to believe the truth. He's giving it all out there. He's putting it out there. I believe that's why God tells us all the good, bad, and ugly in the Bible. I mean, there's things in the Bible that blow my mind a little bit. When they had to go in and destroy the land and kill everybody. It's like, geez, that's a hard one. Taking a child that was disobedient to their parents and stuff and stoning them in the, in the Old Testament. Under the law. Good, bad, and ugly. He didn't hide it. If he was trying to just not give the whole truth and trying to paint people to a good part of him, he wouldn't have done these things. He wouldn't have put it in the word of God. But he gives the whole truth, whether you get it or not. It's there. This is it. Take it or leave it. Do we understand that? God's not tricking people into believing him. I've watched Christians try to do that to other people to get them saved. Oh, I tell you, if you get saved, your life is going to be so much better. You're, uh, you'll, you'll be, it may not be better in this world. Some people get saved and still have a miserable life. Some kids that get saved in our programs still have to go home to a home that is just disgusting and terrible with parents that don't care for them, that still have problems, and they still are going to be saved. It's just life. If we get saved... When you live godly, you're going to suffer persecution. That doesn't seem like a lot of fun. And God tells us that, though, because it's truth. And we got to take the truth for what it is. Isaiah 59, this is a great passage of Scripture. It really is. And I, and I really want you to see this because it's so important. Isaiah 59, verse number 12. <clears throat> it says in verse 12, for our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward. And justice standeth afar off, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. So this is, this is a very good admittance of a sinner, of somebody who's saying, listen, we're a mess. Verse 15, yea, if truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm, is brought, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness has sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. This is talking about Christ coming back here in Isaiah 59. But he, he brings this out there and says truth is failed. It fails because of the wickedness of man, the deceit of man. And they're acknowledging this in, in its path. Judgment is turned away backward. Just, justice is standing afar off. And truth is falling in the street. I tell you, we're living clearly in a day like that today. I mean, it, it shocks, I, I shouldn't say that. It doesn't even shock me anymore. It should shock me that I'm not shocked anymore about not hearing truth. How many people are like me on that one? It's almost like I anticipate lying from almost everybody. And it's sad that we live in that time. That it's, it seems like you hear something on TV, you read something, and the first thing, is that true? I mean, I watched the State of the Union last night. Anybody watch that? Nobody. <laughs> okay. I watched it last night, and, and they got to this point where um, President Biden said something about, um, oh, what was the thing? Oh. Ah, I forgot. There was something that he said, and almost all, all the Republican side started shouting, you're lying, you're a liar, that's a lie. And it clearly was a lie. He made it, he said somebody, President Biden said something about, somebody said in the Republic Party that this is true. And, and they're all like, no. And he goes, well, I'm not going to name names. And they're saying, name names, tell us who said that, because it ain't true. You know, and it was funny, but you know, it's how politics, one way or the other, whoever's up there, everybody's fighting. But I mean, it was like, clearly he lied. And they, all the other pundits afterwards said that he, uh, not true or 
the liberal ones, you know, said, well, you know, it wasn't quite true, but, you know, but either way, it's like, and you know what the thing is? Everybody's like, well, I, didn't, I, ex I didn't expect them to tell the whole truth. Isn't that a shame? And when Trump's up there last time he was in, and then the other side, they're like, well, I don't expect them to tell the truth. And everybody's saying the same thing about everybody, but the problem is, truth faileth. Nobody knows what the truth is anymore. Everybody questions the truth. And when you start questioning the truth, you lose your trust for the truth. And when you lose your trust for the truth, you don't know what truth is. And that's the problem with our nation. That's the problem with our, our entire world, is that truth is failing. And people are only giving a truth if they can manipulate it to their benefit. For whatever it is. Proverbs 6, verse number 16. It says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift to running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that, discord, he that soweth discord among the brethren. So two of the six things that the Lord hates has to do with truth and lying. A lying tongue and a false witness that speaks lies. God hates lying. Hates it. And it's so common because the Bible says all men are what? Liars. But that doesn't mean we have to lie as God's children. That doesn't mean that we can't be real about the truth, even if it hurts. We've always heard that term, truth hurts, right? That's the truth. Truth does hurt. That's why people don't like giving the truth. They try and put a spin on it so that it doesn't hurt. But oftentimes when you put the spin on it, it no longer becomes truth. Amen? See, there are so many things we can go at. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4 says, He is the rock, his work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth. And without iniquity, just and right is he. Psalm 145, verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in what? In truth. In truth. You know, the Antichrist is going to cast down truth. Everybody's so interested in the end times, and which I'm clearly we're living into. We haven't gone into the, you know, the great tribulation yet. But over in Daniel chapter 8, for the sake of time, I'll go through this kind of quick. Daniel 8 talks about the Antichrist, which is you know, the little horn in here. In verse number 9, And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great, toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. Verse 10, and it waxed great, even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. So even he's fooled, even at the point when the Antichrist comes, he's going to fool heavenly angels still, like they fell before. And he's just going to stamp them down, as the Bible says. It's just unbelievable, but it happens. Verse 11. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Verse 12. And the host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and it prospered. The Bible says that they're going to believe a lie, people that are left behind. You know, the evil side of this world has everything to do with lying and not wanting the truth. So if we're going to be dealing with anything in our lives that is true, you've got to tell the truth. It's got to be what it is, whether you like it or not. And I found out over the years it's best just to lay it out there and it's up for people to do it. I think there's, I think there's tact when you're dealing with people and you have to bring things. I think tact is good. You know, how you bring things across are important, but not skewing it for your benefit, not trying to manipulate it to them to see your side, but not see the whole thing that might change their mind. Just given truth. Here, this is it. This is what it is. No, it's hard, but it, it is. If you did something wrong, yeah, I did this, I'm wrong, 
I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm sorry. This is, this is it. There's been times as a pastor I've had come before the church and say, hey, I taught something that was wrong. I found out it was wrong. And here it is. If I ever do that again, I'd do the same thing. I don't, I don't want to be wrong. Things I've been deceived over in my life that I've had to learn from. Now, everybody has. But you know, I think it's important that God's children take a stand. Look at Zechariah chapter 8 with me. Zechariah chapter 8. And we'll look at verse number 16. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And love no false oath for all these things that I hate, saith the Lord. Hey, you know what? We just need to be truthful. Because God is truth. We're Christians. God lives within us. God is truth. You know, it frustrates me with all get out when I hear people deceiving other people. When I read things about different things that you know there's been a spin on it. You, you can see where they're going with it. That's fooling a lot of people or some people. I get so irritated. Because I've been there. I've been fooled by certain things where I've read something and I'm like, oh, wow, oh, yeah, okay. But then I've seen the different perspective on that. Oh, no, that's not, a, that's, that's not as it was seen. I, I've changed my thought on that because now I got the whole truth, right? It's important for all of us to know the truth because the truth sets us free. God is who sets us free. Amen. So when, when, we, when the Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the light, no man cometh unto the Father but by me, it's important to know the whole truth. Amen? That's why this world has confused so many people about Jesus and who he is and what he is and what he does. There's so many people that are fooled, deceived, because they took the truth and then they painted a whole different picture on top of that. And they say, well, he's the son of God, but he's not God. He died on the cross. But he didn't forgive the sins. God did. Because he's not God. That's what Mormonism believes. They'll take a truth. And just paint a different picture. To fool people. But don't, don't be fooled to think that you don't try and do the same thing. Even in your conversations at home and at work and with friends. Be careful to always, always just be truthful. Amen? Because God is truth. You don't want to change him. Amen? Let's just deal with the truth for what it is. Be careful not to deceive out of taking the truth and deceiving somebody because of an ulterior motive that you're trying to prove something. Even if it's a good thing. I know good people that try and prove good things but they manipulate the truth to do that. And that's wrong. Amen? Do you guys understand that point? The Lord is truth. God is truth. So let's appreciate that truth, trust in that truth, and believe him as truth, and don't let truth fail in your life. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this day and for this time. And I thank you that we can go to your word and we can look at truth and know the truth and help us, Lord, to truly know truth and not be manipulated and not, Lord, have the devil trying to give us something but with an ulterior motive. Help us, Lord, to do right by you and, Lord, for you. And I do pray that you help me, Lord, as your servant and as a preacher and pastor, that you help me, Lord, to always give the truth and not try and paint a different picture or deceive people, which... Lord, I pray and never have, but I do ask that you please help all of us, Lord, to do that in every part of our life. Lord, you are truth. You're the way, the truth, and the life, and I thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust you and that we know that we can go and learn the truth for ourselves. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you for making it so easily accessible to us and being able to learn it and grow and share it with others. Help us, Lord, to always do just that. With every head bowed and every eye closed, Christian, would you take some time and talk to the Lord and maybe take some time to really think about truth 
and dig deep with that. And look at some other examples, which I could have brought definitely some more examples here this evening on how t people will take something that's truthful, but they have an ulterior motive behind that, trying to trick people into something because of that truth or using that truth, which no longer makes it truth. Let's take some time and talk to the Lord. This should challenge everyone's heart. It should make us think about what we do and what we say and how we communicate and interact with others and what we believe. That's why it's so important to make sure that you're being influenced by the right people and by truth. Because anybody can be fooled. That's one of the reasons the Bible tells us to separate from the world. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. Because we can be manipulated. We can be fooled. Everybody with any intelligence knows that people can completely change their mind to something that's not true by the influence of others and what they're exposed to. Let's make sure that we're exposed and influenced by God and the things of God. Let's be careful. Let's take some time and talk to the Lord. Know the truth, because the truth is what sets us free. you've done praying let's go ahead and stand good message on knowing the truth the truth shall set you free certainly something we need to remember let's go ahead and close in prayer remember of course Sunday morning uh, be back here or Friday night if you're going to be there for the uh, banquet let's have a word of prayer father we are grateful for your your blessings upon us thank you for the message tonight help us to apply it to our hearts we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.